chapter of the book of Acts. Minister Davis is still celebrating I mean, independence and all of us are. Look at her dress my God. Stand up sister. Take a good one for the camera. Yes, yeah, stand up. Good one for both of us. My goodness what a couple. <laughs> Give them a hand, please. <laughs> Lord bless you. Wow. If you think you should not enjoy each other, you make a sad mistake. If you think you should not enjoy your Christianity, you make a sad mistake. In the presence of the Lord, there he is. And at his right hand. Hallelujah. Glory. So don't be too sad as a Christian. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Earlier days would sing that song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. They want to know that song? All right, let's not sing it now. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you bless your words to our hearts. Your word is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts and it heals. Oh God, I pray that the word will work for everybody today. In my audience here and now, whenever and wherever. Bless your people. Anoint your servants. Make me an instrument of your peace. A vessel of honor. Speaking as an oracle of God, ministering with your ability, in Jesus' name, amen. Minister Donna Edwards read 12 verses from Acts chapter 13. And I'll save that reading and just to look at maybe two verses from verse 2. Maybe it's verse 4. It says, And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, What did the Holy Ghost say? Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they have had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them. They sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Departed unto Sicilia. And from thence they sail to Cyprus. Bishop where do you intend to go this morning? Well let's see. The text is very clear. There's no ambiguity to this text if you look at it carefully. The Holy Spirit was integrally involved in the work of the ministry then as he ought to be now. He is the general superintendent of God's church. He gives oversight to the spiritual operations of the church. 
To the extent that he is the giver of the gifts that we use. Or that he's able to use through us to empower the body of Christ. Therefore, every person who stand up for God should stand under the authority and the unction of the Holy Spirit. My theme is very simple. Sent or went. Sent or went. Were you sent or you simply just went? Because each one has a choice. Either to wait on God for his unction, for his commission, for his anointing, and to be sent by him. Or we can say, you know, it's time for me to go do a thing. So we just go and do our thing. Song says, I can't just stand here and do my own thing. I came on business for the king. Oh, praise God. There's a vast difference, I suppose, between someone who is sent from he or she who simply went. And I say that because Simply to go on your own, you could be on your own. Go on your own, you might be on your own. But the sent one is usually under the authority. The sent one is usually under the instruction. The sent one is usually under the guidance the direction, the care, the protection, and also the provision of he who has sent him. An ambassador to a nation would have been sent by the president to represent the country. Amen. To which he sent or represent his country in the country in which he is sent. And that ambassador is not on his own or on her own. He or she is under, I repeat, the authority, the instruction, the guidance, the direction, the care, the protection, and all the provisions of the sending country, the sending authority, the sending government. Are you with me? All right, take your time. Sometimes we wonder when we see some of the things that are happening in Christendom today in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, in the name of God the Father. We wonder whether or not God is really a part of some of those happenings or whether or not he or she who stand in his name indeed have been sent by the authority of heaven. And I want to take my time to look into this, this text carefully with you today. Knowing that we are in the last days and all kinds of things are happening in the name of Christianity. One of the most complex or diverse religions in the world today. There are so many streams to Christianity. As opposed to the other religions. If you're a Muslim. You are guided by the dictates of the, the Quran. And there's not a whole lot of streams or differences to that. But just think of the many churches that are named the christian churches that are named today in Christ christianity if you think of church of god 
There are myriads of names of churches of God in the world today. Tree of Life Church of God. I can't remember them. All kinds of churches of God. Full church church of God. Maybe part true church of God. I don't know. All kinds of churches of God. And all seem to ought to be embracing the tenets of the Christian faith. But there are so many differences today. Are you not saying nothing? Sent or went. We the Trinitarians who teach the scriptures concerning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit believe in that Trinitarian doctrine as is exposed from Genesis through to Revelation. But there are others who expose another teaching and they have all right to do so based on their understanding of the scripture. We believe in the trinity of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. The trinity of persons and the absolute unity that stands within that trinity. There is no amen, division. There is no differences. Three in one and one in three. Somebody say something. We believe, lift your hand and say, we believe in the Father. We believe in the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we do. And we teach that without fear or favor. Without compromising. Because that is biblical doctrine. Biblical truth. And God spoke earlier time in Genesis. He says, let us. Are you not saying nothing? Let us make man in our own image. After our likeness. Oh glory to God. And I don't want to spend time going on all of that. But a, amen at Jesus' baptism. The father signified the trinity in no uncertain way. Jesus in the water. The Holy Spirit like a dove descended upon him. Oh, glory to God. I feel my preacher touching me. And the voice from heaven saying, What did the voice say? Somebody tell me. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So there the son stood in the water. There the Holy Ghost like a dove descended on him. And there the father spoke from heaven. Oh, glory to God. Somebody lift your hands and praise God like you're in church. Come on. Hallelujah. It is by that authority that we stand today. It is by that authority that we have been sent to declare the unsearchable riches of Christ. Jesus in commissioning the 12 disciples what did he say to them in Matthew chapter 28 go ye therefore and teach all nations all nations baptizing them in the name of the father baptize them in the name of the son baptize them in the name of the Holy Ghost and then you teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and if you do that you'll never be on your own I'll be with you oh praise God somebody praise him here with me I'll be with you all the way even unto the end of the age so you have not simply went he said to them I have sent you I have sent you by the authority of heaven 
go and do as I say. So in this text of Acts chapter 13, especially the verses that I've read from 2 to 4, we see the Holy Spirit operating not as an influence. Some people think the Holy Spirit is just an influence. No, he's not just an influence. He was not operating there as an influence or as wind or as some incorporeal being that means insubstantial being without material existence no he was not and sometimes we mix up the name and the holy spirit with all kinds of spiritism are you not saying nothing i believe the holy ghost get the worst bad name in churches these days because a man stand up on his head if he can and says the holy ghost tell him to stand on his head he knocked off somebody's glasses and says the Holy Ghost caused it. Oh no. The Holy Ghost is a decent, dignified, oh glory to God. Decent, dignified, intelligent person of the Godhead. Somebody say something there. So, he's not an influence, wind or whatever. I know he's represented in wind in fire in oil and all of that but he's not just those he is a person say the holy ghost is a person not an incorporeal being with insubstantial existence no he's a person and because he's a person he possesses attributes of personality like you and i are you with me, somebody? Attributes of personality, such as an intellect. Romans chapter 8 and verse 27. If you put it on the board, I'll read it. He has an intellect. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 10 through 13. It proves that the Holy Spirit, I would say, is the most intelligent person in the universe today. Because he is God's secretary of state. Oh, what a term. The Holy Ghost is God's secretary of state. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the, in the where, in the where, in the mind of the spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Oh glory. Knows what is in the mind of the spirit. He has an intellect. Give him praise somebody. Hallelujah. Not only intellect but he has emotions. I soon get through the text. Because some of you are wondering, Bishop what are you doing? Because you're just waiting on who, who, who. Yeah, you soon get it. He has an intellect. He has emotions. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Give me that verse there. He says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit. He can be grieved. He can feel grief. When you disobey him. When you rebel against him. When you quench him. He is grieved. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed. Oh God, somebody praise him here with me. If you can touch somebody, tell them don't grieve him. Don't grieve him. <laughs> Husbands, when you grieve your wives, you know you have a rude awakening coming. Why is if you grieve your husband, sometimes you have a rude awakening coming? Children grieve their parents, etc. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. He's the one who has sealed us unto the day of redemption. Oh, glory to God. He has emotions. He also has a will. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. So we're not speaking of some influence, amen, without proper organ in the organization of intelligence. He has intellect, 
he has emotions, he has a will. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 11. What that says, put it on the board please. But all these things worketh that one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he oh, you're not saying nothing severally as he will he chooses to do whatever he does because he has a purpose in doing so he has called me and anointed me in the way that I've been anointed for particular reasons he has called you and has anointed you for particular purposes as he sees best. That's the reason you should not run after anybody, as an anybody else's anointing and try to impersonate them. Spend time on your knees. Stay before God and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Give me what is mine. I said this before and I'll say it again. Anybody goes around impersonating another person's personality. Christians now. Impersonating another person's personality and anointing and manifestation. You are going to miss it. Because the Holy Spirit is not a fraud. And he will not anoint fraudsters. Say something behind me choir. Let me say this one again. He will not anoint fraudsters. Fraudsters are spiritual scammers. They have to work up their own scheme. But when the Holy Ghost is upon you, God Almighty will save the Spirit of the Lord. God is upon me. For he has anointed me. Lift your hand and say, anointed, anointed, anointed. Shakunda basoria. Too many fraudsters are around these days. Dear God. The question is were you sent or you simply went?